Um, but that's, this is not the first chronic disease that was identified associated with inflammation. If we go back to the early 1990s, there were some studies looking at total white blood cell count and, and indicated or it showed very clearly that coronary vascular disease risk is associated with variations in your total white blood cell count. And here's the real kicker. I mean, this is, I was taught when I was in medical school that, that and it's still true now, that quote that I still believe now that the normal levels, the normal range for white blood cell count is roughly between five and 10, where the units is number of cells times 10 to the minus, minus ninth per cubic millimeter. But just think five to 10, okay? So low range down at five, upper range 10. And uh, if you can read the, the fine print there, um, uh, when you look at the upper quartile versus the lower quartile, so that's the, the lowest one quarter and the highest quarter within the normal range, the highest quarter has a threefold greater risk of heart disease. In the, this is, so this is you know, the, what we defined as normal the upper range of that is a dramatic, it's associated with a dramatic increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And then in the lower one, that, uh, the researchers, researchers at a famous, very uh, large longitudinal study started in the 1960s called the Framingham Dietary Heart, Diet Heart Study, uh, they demonstrated that for every one step, you go from five to six to seven to eight to nine, for every one step you go up, there is a very significant increased risk of heart disease. It's twice as great in men as women. In women. Um, but again, uh, the, when you go from um, uh, even just above six, you, and so you have from six to 10, still the normal range, and yet you have a marked increase in coronary risk. So, and this has nothing to do, they've, they've, they showed that that risk is completely independent of cholesterol and L, total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. So this is not lipoprotein-driven heart disease. This is something else and probably has to do with vascular inflammation independent of one's cholesterol level. So it's really, and you know, these things were published in the early 1990s. Now, why didn't people act? Well, one thing is, there's no money in measuring white blood cell count. I mean, people figured out how to do that after the, you know, like a, a week after von Leeuwenhoek or whoever it was, and, you know, invented the first microscope. Um, there's no money in this. But it turns out that um, a, there is a biomarker, this thing called CRP, uh, that was, uh, had been known for a long time, but uh, a researcher at Harvard named Paul Ridker developed a way to measure it at very low levels, which is the normal levels. Previously, you could only measure CRP when you had very markedly elevated levels with acute inflammation. And he figured out that the high sensitivity test in the normal, you know, in, in what was considered the normal range. But here you look at this graph, and it, this shows four quartiles within a, a, a ostensibly healthy population, people without heart disease, and you look from the lowest quartile to the highest quartile, and you can see on the vertical axis the relative risk of, of developing heart disease, and for the half of the population, the upper two quartiles have four times the coronary disease risk of the, the lower ones based on, on CRP. And this has become you know, kind of the standard biomarker everybody looks at, but it's only one key on the orbit, organ. 